Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this month's Deal Clinic Live. With us today, we have Emma and Toby from White Door Properties, who are our experts in rent to rent and purchase lease options. This is February. It's Valentine's Day, everyone. So happy Valentine's. And we are doing a Valentine's special because we know that our investors are love, love, loving the rent to rent and purchase lease options we've just introduced to the model, to the platform. Corny, I know, but it's true. They are loving it. So with us today, we have Emma and Toby from White Door Properties, who are our experts in rent to rent and purchase lease options. They will be guiding you through today's episode um, on this uh, special and how to get involved in rent to rent, what to look for, and how to make it your best uh, cash machine moving forward. So they're going to help explain two models, model one and model two, and we'll go into a little bit more detail around that. But before we get into it, I just want to welcome all of you who are watching us live and those that will watch us on replay. This will go out to our YouTube channel, Sourcing Investments uh, Limited, and snippets of this will go across uh, social media, across Instagram, Facebook, and so on and so forth. Right. So I do encourage, as always, interaction because it will help you understand exactly what the deal is. There are no such things as stupid or silly questions. Please do ask. I will be keeping my eye on the chat box as well as the Q&A. Feel free to drop those in there for me, please. Um, bear with me. I do not have my partners in crime today. Uh, it is me on my own with Emma and Toby. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce them properly. Um, if you haven't registered to the platform, uh, please do feel free if you want to register as an investor. It's uh, sourcinginvestments.co.uk forward slash investor dash registration. Once you're there, you'll be able to add in your details and register with us. You'll be able to see Toby and Emma, as well as our other agents and all the properties that we have. Now, this is our rent to rent special because our investors are loving it. Our agents have been doing this for quite a while. But as I mentioned, we only recently um, added rent to rent and purchase lease options to our platform. So we want to just uh, explain this to you so that you have a clarity around what this actually means uh, when you're looking for the deals and what's involved. Um, so I'm going to just do a quick brief intro about Toby and Emma. So I will share their link to their platform uh, uh, with it to their website, sorry, within the platform so that you can find them with ease. But just so that you know, they are actually a UK based agency. They joined Sourcing Investments last April and they're very well established. They were established well before they joined us as well. Now, they are very fluent in all types of um, strategies, buy to let, commercial and mixed use, as well as the rent to rent and purchase lease options that we'll be going through today. They have great response times and they have a huge team that includes a whole service of solicitors, brokers, surveyors, lettings teams and build teams as well. So they cover the whole package for you. Um, so with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly play their video bio. Um, I'm getting much better at these tech people, believe you me. And then we will, uh, and then I will hand over to Toby and Emma. Okay, so without further ado. Hi, my name is Toby White. And my name's Emma Rowland. Together, we run White Door Properties, a growing sourcing company with a focus on client care and end-to-end -end deal management. In real terms, this means we don't just source a deal and leave the investor to figure out the rest. Investing in property can often be challenging and complicated, but it doesn't need to be. Our services include finding high-quality investments, mainly in the northwest of England, providing refurbishment assistance and support, including full relevant quotations and project management, assistance with surveys, int introductions to the best brokers, solicitors and insurers, helping with the final tenancy and anything else that is required. We pride ourselves on ensuring that all parties are fully informed, kept up to date and are supported as much as possible. 
Covering the northwest of England, specifically Liverpool, Manchester, St. Helens and Wigan, ensures that our knowledge of rental demand, tenant types and projected returns are as accurate as possible. The northwest is a growing region and with the HS2 train line due to be completed, prices are expected to rise even further. Get in touch today to not simply buy a deal, but to work with your new professional, ethical and fully transparent property partners. Our success lies in helping others achieve higher returns through ethical and stable investing. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. It's a great video. I, I always love watching your uh, transformations. Before I hand over to uh, experts today, I just want to say a uh, live hello to, we have uh, guests on the line, our attendees, Alan, Alni, I've got ATM, Hamid, uh, Baggy, lovely to see you here, Baggy. We've got Ben, Dennis, Fitzroy, Joe. There's two Joes. There's Joe and Jojo. Uh, Louis, Rosemary, Tani. I hope I've pronounced your name right. Timmy and Tom. Welcome to the Deal Clinic Live February special. Lovely to have you here. And just before I hand you over to our experts today, I just want to explain that they are going to do a beautiful presentation with you. And um, our rent to rent model is absolutely flying off the shelf. When I say flying off the shelf, we've sold five already last week. Uh, Toby and Emma have sold all of theirs. So the project we'll be showing you today has actually been sold and they are in the process of securing more. Uh, which they will upload as soon as they have been secured. So with that, um, I will hand over. We have got a question. Uh, oh, no, it's Alan Edwards saying hello to all three of us. So hello, Alan. Lovely to have you here with us. OK, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the lovely Emma and Toby of White Door Properties so they can guide you through this model. OK, so thanks for taking the time today and listening to what we have to share. But first things first, for those who don't know, my name is Toby. And this is Emma. Um, yeah, so we're part of White Dove Properties. We've been sourcing since 2020, sold over £10 million worth of property, um, including buy to lets, blocks of apartments, and more recently, rent to SA, which obviously we'll explain later. Uh, we're also uh, recently property investors ourselves, and we're now moving into the coaching and consulting space. And outside of our profession, uh, we're massive dog lovers. I don't know if you've heard our dog just barking just then, perfectly timed. Uh, we enjoy hiking in nature. Uh, I really enjoy table tennis and I love playing yoga. We both love to travel domestically and abroad, and we're semi obsessed with going to the gym. Um, this is some horrendous food that we tried in Asia. Now, that is tarantula, fairly disgusting, but again, we do love Asia, and this is our dog, Muffin. <laughs> But more importantly, why are we here and how can we help? Um, as you likely know, the market is changing. Um, what once worked just now doesn't. Um, so in our opinion, HMOs are becoming less appealing. Uh, demand is high, but rising utility costs is a concern. So it eats into your cash flow and it's a bit unpredictable at the moment as well. So buy to let in the south of England and even to some extent across the entire UK aren't stacking very well, which means obviously the high interest rates with the high purchase prices do result in low cash flow. And the BRR model, model also um, can work in some areas, but can be tricky. Our concern is it's unstable. Uh, the unstable interest rates lead to unpredictable mortgage exits. So right now, what is working? In our opinion, purchase lease options and rent to SA, otherwise known as rent to rent. So before we jump in, let me explain quickly what a PLO is or a purchase lease option and what a rent to SA is. Um, so a rent to rent is a strategy in property that simply means you can rent a property um, from a landlord and then rent it out to create an uplift in property re revenue, rent and income. So for example, you rent a property for £500 per month from a landlord, and then you rent the property on Airbnb for £100 per night, otherwise £3,000 gross income per month. You'll need to be responsible for the utilities, the council tax, the running costs, but this is a great strategy as you don't need a purchase deposit. These agreements usually last between three and five years, um, and then a purchase lease option is pretty much the same, but the difference is that you agree to buy the property at the end. So if you rent it for three to five years, I think it can be up to seven, um, and then you buy the property at the end of the agreement. Um, but the good thing is that you agree the price at the start of the agreement, so you get the benefit of uplifting value over that um, number of years. 
And um, yeah, the seller can't change their mind on the purchase price once it's agreed at the start and the contracts are signed. That's what they have to agree to at the end. So PLOs and rent to rents are an excellent loan money down strategies that give you solid returns without the worry of interest rates or needing to worry about purchase deposits or stamp duty. So for rent to SA, there are two models. First one is model one, which is, means that you are the rent SA op operator. So effectively, you give the landlord guaranteed rent and use the property as service accommodation. Or model two is where you are the landlord yourself. So you effectively receive guaranteed rent for your existing property from an operator. So for example, with model one. Yep, yeah, so um, for PLOs and rent to rents, you don't need 25% deposit, you don't need to be mortgageable, and you don't need to wait three to six months to complete on the transaction. You can benefit from solid monthly cash flow, starting profits uh, from the deal within two to three weeks once you've set, once you're set up, and you can leverage your capital to acquire multiple deals at the same time. So some of the startup costs with purchase lease options and rent to SA. First one being the sourcing fee. So just like any source property, there will be an associated fee attached to the deal. Now, these fees usually range from £2,500 to £5,000, depending on the size of the property, the expected returns, the condition, and the location. So, for example, some deals such as blocks of apartments or blocks of flats may have a higher sourcing fee. Secondly, you need to look at staging and furnishing. You will likely need to stage and furnish the property to make it more appealing for tenants. And so as a very rough guide, a two-bedroom house will cost around £3,000 to furnish, a three-bedroom house to be around £4,000, and then a four-bedroom house or even a block of apartments can be £5,000 and above. So um, some more startup costs. Um, so for PLOs and rent to rents, we ask the operator gives a holding deposit to the landlord. Um, this is normally either six to 12 months worth of rent that's kept in the source and investments independent escrow account. Um, holding deposit just protects the interest of the transaction, which means the landlords will be covered for their rental income. So for example, if something happens and the um, investor can't pay the rent, we just take it out of the 12 months they've already put up front. Um, but of course, it would be refundable at the end. So the next thing you need to consider is the location of the property. So the locations of PLOs and rent to SAA deals will determine the occupancy rates and the demand. So getting it right, in our opinion, is essential. So some things to look out for determine if there's demand in the area, if there's any hospitals nearby, any motorway access, if there's train stations nearby, what the local industry and large employers are, any public parks and nature reserves, and how close is the city centre or a town centre or any local attractions in the area. And it's also worth noting that rent to SA can serve Airbnb tourists as well as contractors, NHS staff, professional workers, and so on. Um, so PLOs and rent to rents are very quick, and that's one of the major advantages of doing either um, a model. So instead of a traditional purchase taking up to six months to complete or sometimes longer, PLO or rent to rent normally takes three to two to three weeks to formalize and begin, um, meaning you can generate cash flow very quickly and you will also be putting less money into the deal. So in relation to the cash flow, depending on the deal location, size and condition, this can change. So you, you will be responsible for the monthly utilities and ongoing costs, such as looking after the gas, the electricity, the water, the council tax repairs, check-ins, cleanings and bookings. But because the property is rented on a daily basis rather than traditionally on a monthly basis, you will get a higher uplift in rent and revenue per month. And so as a rough rule of thumb, after costs, a standard two to three bed house, assuming you've got the area correct, can generate between three to five hundred pounds in monthly profit. And now for each deal, we will consult with our bespoke rent essay manager to provide exact figures and running costs. So in summary, you need to consider the upfront costs when looking at a rent to essay or purchase these option deal. So for example, in this example, the monthly rent is £700 times 12, and this effectively be your holding deposit plus £4,000 to stage a property, plus £4,000 for the sourcing fee, which equals £16,400. Next, you need to consider the location, what's close by, if there's any train stations, amenities, hospitals. Then you'll need to think about the time scales, And then finally, you'll need to consider the cash flow of roughly three to £500 per month, depending if it's a two to three bedroom house. Obviously, with the block of apartments, it can be much more. And feel free to get in touch with us to verify any cash flow information with our rental SA manager. Uh, yes, yeah, so we hope all that information uh, makes sense. If you have any questions, get in touch after this presentation. We'll be glad to help. Um, and we had an example that we uploaded to the platform, um, but obviously it's sold. So we're just going to run through that so you can see, sort of understand the figures. So this is a property that we had in Liverpool. 
Now, the sourcing fee for this particular deal was £3,500, the staging cost was £3,500, and the holding deposit was 12 months worth of rent, which is effectively £800 per month times 12. The total upfront money was £16,600. In this case, the running utilities per month was £800, and this included things like the Wi-Fi, water, gas, electric, cleaning, repairs, and some contingency costs. The rent to SA management fees, which was £390, the rent to the landlord, which was £800, and the OTA commissions, which stands for online travel agency, so effectively your Airbnb commissions, your booking.com commissions, was £200. So your total monthly expenses was £2,190. However, the gross income for this property was £2,600. So your, so your total profit per month was £410 per month, or just under £5,000 per year. Now, as an ROI, this is nearly 30% ROI. And now, assuming that you return your full holding deposit after the agreement is finished, your ROI actually jumps up to 70%, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you have any questions on this, simply let us know. And then, um, oh, sorry, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, so this is amazing. This is uh, uh, really amazing. So I hope our investors have any questions, please do drop that into the chat box or the Q&A box. I'm keeping my eye open. But I just wanted to go over um, just a couple of things that you mentioned there with regards to upfront costs, if you don't mind. So you mentioned there in the example that um, it was £700 times 12 the the, uh, the example that you had before, just like the simple formula, Toby, that you had, it was 700 times 12. Yes, that one, perfect. And then you've got the 4,000 and 4,000. So just as just as a quick question, you know, if I was if I was the landlord and I was leasing this to somebody, why are we only securing 12 months up front in case I'm doing a three year contract, as an example? Would how do I how do you safeguard me in my investment if it was a three year contract? How does that work? So usually uh, in an ideal situation, these contracts run very, very smoothly. And it's very rare that the um, relationships break down and things. So we usually find between six months and 12 months rent is usually more than sufficient. But we kind of have that there as the sort of safety buffer, yeah, if that makes sense. It's very rare that it would have to be dipped into anyway. Um, so, so that's more than enough. kind of there as a backup, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, perfect. So just um, to double check, this is if I am the owner. Yes, correct. Model. Okay, perfect. I'm just trying to keep it really simple so that anyone out there who is an investor who might be, this may be new information for, please do write your comments in the chat box and Q&A box and I'll keep an eye on those. If you're watching this on replay, feel free to email us at admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk uh, just with regards to hashtag replay on the rent to rent special and we'll know exactly what you may mean and feel free to drop your questions in there we've got stuff coming through um actually on the chat box it says here so dennis has got a so baggy says it's a great presentation um and he's actually asked what are your three sourcing methods um i don't know if you want to declare <laughs> <laughs> what your secret weapons are mm -hmm. um is that something you you're happy to answer yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know if we've got three sort of top strategies, but a lot of them come through um, referrals, word of mouth, um, existing yeah, existing clients and things. It all just depends, really. It's um, There's no sort of one magic bullet, if you like. It's just a kind of variety of things. Brilliant. Perfect. Thank you for that. I hope that answers that, Baggy. And then Dennis has got a great question here. He, he's actually asked, what about legal fees? And would you provide the TV and things like curtains, towels, sheets, interior decor, et cetera, besides the furniture? So that's usually included within the £4,000 in this particular example. Um, now, it depends. Obviously, each property is different. Some some properties may already have sort of curtains and things up. Some may not. So it, it, as the £4,000 in this case for the staging cost is a very rough rule of thumb. Mm. Uh, like like anything in property, really, there's always you know some fluctuations and th some things that are subject to change. Yeah. So the, the investor would be the one that puts the um, money into it to stage it and decorate it. Sometimes we do come across properties that have already been run as SA in the past and then they want to find a new provider so we can pass that on. So um, in that case, it might already be furnished, but then the source and fee would be a bit higher just to reflect that. But then mm. they'll be paying less overall. Um, with regards to legals, there are there are no legals. Um, 
you are effectively just um, a corporate tenant. So we have agreements um, that have been written up by solicitors. I mean, obviously, you feel free to have your own solicitor look over it. I'm sure they would just pay, I don't know, charge a couple of hundred pounds to check it. But um, you don't you don't need like formal um, just, just conveyance like or anything yeah, like that. Mm, amazing. Amazing. Thank you for that. And um, just with regards to setup costs and things like that for, for furnishings, would you be able to advise say say i'm the say my i'm the i'm the investor i'm the landlord the owner and i'm looking to do this rent to rent model and yes i've got the setup costs and the staging costs would it be advisable that i go maybe a little bit extra uh, and get maybe a little bit more higher spec in that in that staging would that help me acquire a better tenant who would probably be able to pay a little bit more, who would maybe look after the property a little bit better? Would is is yeah. is that something that happens? Yeah. So I mean, what you can do, you can do all sorts of things. I suppose it's um how long's a piece of string, how much money do you really want to spend? I mean, you can do even things like um hiring like hot tubs and things that can add value and you can kind of increase booking rates and things like that. Um we can't advise, I suppose, exactly how much you want to spend. That's down to you. But again, as a very rough rule of thumb, four four thousand pounds for a two to three bedroom house usually is sufficient. But again, you can spend more if you'd like. Amazing, but obviously to bear that in mind that that would eat into oh, the profit potentially. Yeah. If the yeah. yeah, okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, okay, so a lot of questions coming through. <laughs> We've got um, what's your process for ensuring the lender is happy with the long lease for the rent to rent. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, so with the in terms of the property owner and things, um, they will need to check that their mortgage effectively allows this um type of uh, short 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 term lots. Um, this is a conversation that we can definitely assist with in terms of um speaking with the landlord and things, but it is um we do we do always need to get permission, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, a lot of our a lot of our landlords they buy in cash. Um so it's not really been a problem for us, but if you do have a mortgage on the property, um, then yeah, you just need to check with the lender that they allow for short-term lets or um, corporate lets, that kind of thing. Yeah, and that's and vital, isn't it? Because it could it could jeopardise their mortgage if 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 not. Yeah, exactly. And also, there's insurance, special insurance you can get as a landlord and as the investor. Um, so the investor would get insurance to cover their belongings in the property, of like a normal tenant would. The landlord would get insurance um, that covers them to allow the property to be used as rent to rent or SA service accommodation. Brilliant. And is that the responsibility? Uh, of the investor themselves or is that something that you can signpost them with or do you actually help them in that process yeah we can help so we work with a broker who specifically sets up this kind of insurance um we've done well we use him for all of our agreements um so he knows exactly what they are because not all not all um insurance providers understand the type mm. of um, agreement that it is so yeah we can we can arrange that amazing amazing so i hope that answers your question there baggy he's that he's uh, baggy's actually put and also limited companies there's no difference with uh limited companies in terms of uh facilitating these arrangements yeah perfect brilliant thank you so tani has a question why would the landlord agree to such a deal locking in price now and getting a fraction of the price now yeah, that's a great question. Something that we will uh, cover in a second. Um, but effectively, um, if you were, if, as a landlord, if you were to rent your property with a letting agent, let's just make the numbers really easy, say £500 per month, a letting agent may charge, say, 10% for a management fee. So there's £50 already knocked off the rent. The landlord is also going to have to factor things like a tenant fine fee, but things like maintenance, things like void periods. So with a £500 monthly rent, take off your 10% management fee, take off a little budget for voids and maintenance and tenant fine fees. Um, you may be walking away with 350 to £400, but with these agreements, there's no letting agent involved at all. There's no void periods. There's no maintenance to worry about. So effectively, the, the income that you get is your gross and your net income, if that makes sense. So you're actually earning the same gross income, but you're keeping more of your income. So you actually walk away with a higher return. And it's more hands off for the landlord. So that's why they like these types of agreements. But I'm not sure if maybe they were referring to the actual to the PLO, because I think they asked why would they lock it in at the start? Is that right? Were they on about like the end purchase price? Uh it says why would the landlord agree to such a deal, locking in price now and getting a fraction of the price now? Yeah, the PLO, I think. 
isn't it? Yeah. So Tani, just let us know if you're referring to PLO or, or rent to rent, that would really help us answer in the best way. Um, but I'll move on until we get that. I'll move on to the next um, question is by eight. By the way, ATM Hamid, I love I love that because that's just like a cash machine, isn't it? That's what we're here for. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I see property investment cash machines. Um, so ATM Hamid asks, what is the exit strategy if this if things dies? Is it ATM? I think that I think that's I think that's meant to say what is the exit strategy if things don't go according to plan for any reason. Yeah, so um, we usually have so because the agreements are quite long three to five years, we usually allow a 12 month kind of break clause. So usually 12 months into the contract, both parties would know if it's working for them or not. So it allows both sides to just discuss the agreement It allows them to. Um, landlord to increase the rent or to extend the contract or if it's not working cancel the contract and can both walk away um i mean it's possible you know like with any investment things might go wrong usually you'll be able to just the landlord and the investor can just speak with each other and just try and iron things out um and come to some kind of solution between yourselves but that's why we put the break clause in to um allow both sides to be able to and walk away if they need to. Mm. And that, oh, God, I'm sorry. No, no, you go, please, Toby. Yeah. I was going to mention we can also include uh, multiple break clauses as well. So it doesn't have to be, for example, just one break clause. It could be two. It could be three. It's, it's completely open to negotiation. Mm. And I love, I love what you've just said there. And also, just with regards to the question itself, nothing is ever guaranteed. I know that we call some some agents refer to it as guaranteed rent, but there isn't anything that's ever really like nothing in. There's only one thing in life that's guaranteed. There's only one thing in life that's guaranteed, and none of us are moving there or, or want to move there fast. So, really, when we talk about this strategy, it is a very good strategy, but. Um, it, it, but but nothing is guaranteed. And as Toby and Emma have just mentioned there, really everything in life is a conversation. Everything in life is communication. And if anything uh, feels like it's not moving in the direction that you wished or wanted it to, then it is just a conversation. And I think if we remember that, then life is a little bit easier with regards to things like this, um, because usually things break down when it's lack of communication more than anything. Yeah. Um, okay, brilliant. So Rosemary has asked, what if I choose to furnish the property myself? Does this reduce the cost for rent to rent? Well, I'll let uh, Toby and Emma answer that, Rosemary, but what I would ask you to consider is, you may want to furnish it yourself, but when you're looking at one, it may be very easy, but when you start to have a handful of these, that's when it may get a little bit trickier. So um, Emma and Toby, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you can certainly stage it yourself. Um, it's just potentially going to mean a lot of hassle for you, though. Um, so we have got kind of staging companies that we do work with that will cover effectively most of the UK. But yeah, you can certainly do it yourself. Um, it depends if you like doing a lot of flat pack, to be honest. Which I personally hate. <laughs> in, in these in these agreements, though, like the the landlord wouldn't be the one um, furnishing it. It would always be the investor furnishing it. So um, that's just the 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 agreements are. It's kind of quite hands off for the um the landlord which we'll go into in a bit but yeah it would always be you furnishing it but you don't personally have to sit there and put all the stuff together there are companies that can come in and do that for you perfect and and decorate and do all that brilliant and would that reduce if if rosemary was to opt for that um where where she she does actually furnish the property herself yeah, if she was uh, would, would it reduce the cost yeah, yeah, definitely. Because obviously she she won't have to pay anyone to come in and do that for you. But then it, it probably would be, it would probably take more time. So we know a company that will come in and do it literally within a day and they'll furnish the entire house. So it, it just depends then because if you're taking longer to set it up, that's eating into your time of being able to use it. So it could be worth just getting someone in to do it for you. Mm, yeah absolutely that's a great that's a great point Emma okay brilliant so Rosemary I hope that answers your question there Fitzroy has a question um I, I'm not sure what this means so I hope this makes sense uh Toby and Emma not much room for error in the figures you mentioned I, I'm not sure if that mean is meant to say is there much room for error oh in the example do you mean in that yeah. show to back to it 
So this one, yeah. So this one is um, assuming that the property is um, achieving around sort of a seventy percent occupancy. So again, just like all things of property, um, a lot of things don't go to plan, all that kind of stuff. But the, there is the other side of the coin um, where we're seeing like sort of ninety percent plus occupancy. But so we kind of, um, I suppose, keep things to a little bit of conservative to say sixty or seventy percent occupancy. Mm -hmm. That's how we, how, we, how we kind of run our numbers, and that's how our SA manager runs her numbers as well. Also, mm. in, this, in with these particular houses where you've got kind of um, big um, bedrooms, so say it's three bedrooms, you can get up to kind of like 10 contractors stay in there. So you actually charge per person per night, not necessarily the whole house. So this is just an example of if you just charged £800 for the whole house or whatever it is. Um, but in a lot of instances, you can actually charge per person as well. Mm. And nightly nightly rates, as we know, because serviced accommodation, in, in, uh, as an example, for me, the way I relate to serviced accommodation is very similar to hotels. Mm. So, you know, a hotel nightly rate is a lot more uh, lucrative, should we say, than if than if we blocked out a whole month, because obviously there's there's a discounted rate there when it's a whole month versus a nightly rate. So is that is that what you meant by that, Emma? Uh, no, I mean, so um, obviously you were charged for the property per, per day or per night, but in these particular properties where they've got, where they're kind of more houses outside of the city centre, so not a flat, you actually can charge per person in the property instead of one mm -hmm. price per night. So you make mm -hmm. more, you get more, um, it might only be sort of 40, 50 pounds, but you could get like up to 10 people in one house. It's usually mm. for like contractors. So we we kind of um, specifically work in Liverpool where there's a lot of um, industry and manufacturing going on. So our main uh, sort of the main people that use our properties are contractors. So you can set it up with kind of like a double bed, a single bed, maybe even two single beds in one room, same in the next other, the other two rooms. So you can end up getting quite a lot of people in there. You will often find um, contracting companies will come to you and be like, oh, can I rent this for three months, put my whole team in while we're doing this project. That's amazing. Like, so you, you're kind of renting per person as well. Per bed, yeah. Yeah. Per okay, bed. amazing. Thank you. I hope that answers um, the question there, Fitzroy. Um, okay, so ATM Hamid has got another question. Uh, if landlords has... If the landlord has got a mortgage on the property, how will the lender accept it when it goes under rent to rent model? And also, how does the landlord's insurance cover the rent to rent model? But I think that's what we've covered there, uh, Hamid, that you would need to ensure if you are the owner, you would need to check in. And if you have a mortgage on that property, you would need to check in with your mortgage lender to make sure that you're not breaching any terms. And if the if you are the um, the what's the word I'm looking for operator, then again uh, it would be nice for you to check. But it's actually the it's actually the owner's responsibility yeah. to check yeah. that for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right, Emma and Toby? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I hope that answers that question there, um, Hamid. Tani has put okay on the second portion. It doesn't apply for the rent to rent strategy. Okay, that was just clarification on the previous. Uh, Tom has asked when you're more established in this field, is it worth setting up an angel investors branch of your business to require cash to fund these deals whilst offering investors, say, an 8% yearly uplift on their investment? <laughs> I'm intrigued with, your, with the way you're going there, Tom, but yes, let's ask that to, to our experts today. It's definitely an interesting question. Um, not one I've thought about before. Um, hmm. yeah. no, it just <laughs> depends how you... Do, do you mean us personally or in general? <laughs> I, I think we'll say in general because yeah, obviously yeah. it's not something, as well as agents, uh, Tom, just to let you know, as agents, we can't guarantee uh, or promise any particular ROI yeah, or exactly. any guaranteeing of any investments, we're not legally allowed to do that. So I'm just going to put that up front as the disclaimer here on that. Um, so we as agents are not allowed to do that. We, we're not FCA regulated. So that is really out of our, for want of a better word, jurisdiction. Um, but if what you're asking is, would it be worthwhile setting up a pool of investors so that you could acquire cash to buy or offer or maybe invest in these type of deals so that maybe you would be able to facilitate some sort of 
investment interest, like on an ROI, I think maybe if we look at it from that perspective, would this be a potentially good model to use Emma and Toby? Potentially, obviously we can't give advice, but potentially um, it's yeah. an interesting model, interesting model, yeah. Yeah. When you fund it, but you just have to remember that you, as the investor, would have to, at the very least, pay the landlord his guaranteed rent every month and your yes. own utilities and your profit. And then on top of that, you then have to pay these people interest. It might get a bit complicated. Mm. It just depends how well the property does, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's a great point that it's it's really Tom. You know, when you enter into the rent to rent, the key aspect here is that you pay those people first. So you pay the owner, you pay the bills, and then whatever's left is your profit. And now whether you want to divvy that up between you and your investors is is really a choice uh, that only you could make. Yep. I hope that answers your question. Um, he's also asked, what software do you use to do occupancy calculations? Um, so this is all with our sort of uh, rent to SA manager. So when we kind of present these deals, we'll always speak to her first, kind of get the numbers and things, but it's mainly her that deals with these sort of occupancy and kind of the expected tenant types and the demand and all that kind of stuff. So I think she uses AirDNA, which is part of Airbnb's data. Mm. Um, so it's worth mentioning that I don't think we've really explained it very well. So in this situation, the investor would kind of... Um, you'd be putting the money into the deal and that, but you don't necessarily have to deal with the day-to-day -day of the bookings. You can, if you wanted to, if you were experienced in that, but you would then use like a, a, a service accommodation operator, which we have, and she would then, um, yeah, that's where the management fees come in, the 15%, that goes to her. And she basically takes all that, all that stress, all that faff, and she does all that. She does the arranges the cleaners, she arranges the bookings, she arranges the changeo changeovers, maintenance, all that sort of stuff. So you can sit back and um, it'll be quite hands off for you then. Mm. And just with regards to what you've mentioned there, Emma, is so key because, you know, when we have a buy to let, a simple buy to let, we usually have a management agency or a letting agency that would go in and manage that service for us. And really, when you think about that, from what a what a, a normal letting agent goes in with you know turnover of tenants an rsa management agency will look after that properly and turns that over after every uh tenant or, or occupier has been in and out whether it's whether they've used it for a weekend a day a month so actually you know in that example when we're looking at it 390 pounds for the month is actually a really good deal. It's actually a really great investment to invest in a company like that to take away the stress and the hassle and the time, really, because more than anything, it's the time it takes yes. to turn those properties. We've, I'm pretty sure, majority of us on here have at, have at least used a serviced accommodation. I won't mention any providers' names, but we've at least used serviced accommodation. And if we just think about what's involved, you know, when we go in, we want it to be clean and fresh you know, linens and, and, and all of that, they're ready to use, but that's actually then replicated for the next. So whether you're using it for the night, the weekend or a month or a week, that provider goes in and turns that property around ready for the next one. So what you've just mentioned there, uh, Emma, is so crucial because I think, you know, for less than £400 on this property as an example, to do that yeah. is, is, is amazing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's just a lot more hands off then. Totally. I mean, if I, I wouldn't want to do it, I'll be honest. Um, OK, so Baggy's asked actually about the air DNA. He said, have you found the accuracy of air DNA in advising on property areas and rents? How, sorry, how have you found the accuracy of air DNA uh, in advising uh, property on property area and rents? So again, we we kind of can't like advise too much on this because that's mainly our manager, but she will use this information as well as her database of um, things like contractors and things, which obviously that data isn't on AirDNA. AirDNA oh. is obviously just for the, the tourism side of things, yeah. but the contractors and the sort of the working professionals and the NHS staff naturally aren't on that platform. So she uses a combination of different sort of data sets to make that yeah. decision. And she's also very, um, what's the word? Um, 
she doesn't over exaggerate it. She's very cautious. So she her figures are usually conservative. Yeah. Conservative, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So she's she's very conservative. Um, so it's usually you usually would achieve more. Um, and then you know, it's just once you get to know the areas as well, you know which areas do well. Um, so our essay manager, she has her own rent to rents, and then she can also run other people's rent to rents. Fabulous. Fabulous. OK, thank you for that. We've got more questions here, but really what I'm conscious of, because they I feel that Tom, Wendy, Fitzroy and Joe, with those questions that you have, if you get in touch with Emma and Toby at White Door, I will drop the link into the chat box again for you. But please do get in touch with them or feel free to email us at admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk. We'll happily go through those. I'm just conscious of time and that I want to really get model two underway so that we can have that explanation as well. OK, perfect. Um, so that was effectively um, model one, which is kind of the more complicated model, uh, if you like. But this is kind of um, model two, which is effectively the other side of the entire process. So effectively, if you're currently an existing landlord who already has buy to lets or blocks of apartments and you effectively want to receive the guaranteed rent on the other side of the transaction, we can certainly help you with this. So, so far, we've helped around 45 landlords kind of get guaranteed rent, which, again, is kind of the model two, which is the other side of, of the coin. Mm. So in this case, instead of being the rent to rent operator, you are the landlord and you allow someone to be the operator in your property. The operator pays you a guaranteed rent and you just sit back and enjoy the rent coming in. You don't pay any letting agent fees. There's some maintenance that you'll be responsible for, such as, uh, such as like windows, doors, structure of the building, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, they cover kind of day-to-day -day maintenance. So it's, it's very hands-off. Um, uh, yeah, so some of the other advantages, so you've got no void periods, because obviously it's the guaranteed rent, no letting agent fees, no maintenance costs, apart from the few things that you are responsible for, and no tenant buyer fees. So yeah, as the landlord, you keep more of your rent, your gross rent is your net rent. So you effectively walk away with a higher return. Um, so again, we've already kind of touched on this. Uh, so the thing to consider here is that some mortgage companies may not allow rent to SA. So please check with your mortgage broker or your lender to see if you are allowed to have short-term lets, also known as corporate lets or a corporate tenancy. So if you are interested in rent to SA deals or getting guaranteed rent to your properties, which again is effectively model two, feel free to get in touch. And if you scan this QR code in the bottom right hand corner, that should take you to our uh, SI uh, landing page, hopefully with a bit of luck. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to ask you some questions. I think we've covered some of it, but it is to do actually with these models. So really, just as an overview, model one is where I own the no. property and somebody uh, the, as an investor online is then the operator. So model one is where the um the, you're the investor. Yeah, the investor is effectively the operator. Model two is where you're the landlord and you're allowing for model one. Yeah. Apologies. Okay, yes. So I'm the operator in model one. So yeah. I yeah. don't own the property. And model two, I do own the property and somebody else is my operator. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So model one, you're the investor putting the money in. Model two, you're the landlord receiving the guaranteed rent basically. Fantastic, fantastic. So I hope that clears that up. Um, the way I described that was not clear. So thank you for that. Um, I have I have some questions, actually, which I hope will um, clarify some of the stuff that's been said uh, through your presentation. And you've already mentioned about timeframes of, you know, how long the contract can be, and that you'll have several break clauses in there. Um, and you've also mentioned really why, so as an example, just for those that are watching on the replay as well, why would it, why would I choose to do the rent to rent versus selling? Um, so as a landlord, I suppose it's the best way to do it. If, if you were looking to still let your property anyway, um, rent to rent's a better option for you as a landlord, because like we say, it's guaranteed, it's no voids not as much maintenance um, no letting agent fees you coming away with more um, rent overall I suppose if you were looking to do rent to rent you wouldn't be looking to sell so maybe that's more for the PLO side of things um, mm. but there are many situations where um, landlords or vendors can't sell 
So their only option is to rent it out. And so sometimes a rent to rent works better. So we like if they're in negative equity, for example, um, if the house they are trying to sell it for more than it's worth, um, if it's just not in good enough condition and yeah, there's just many different reasons why um, a PLO would work more than an actual just normal sale. I know it's hard to get your head around because I, I didn't really understand it at first. I thought, well, why would they, why would a landlord do that? They're getting less money. <laughs> but, um, a lot of um, inherited properties as well. Mm. Uh, people could become accidental landlords. They don't necessarily want to be one. That's another good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so if someone's like an accidental landlord and they've inherited the property, they haven't got the first clue about what to do and they don't necessarily want to have any involvement at all. This is where these situations can be really perfect. Yeah. Mm, amazing. Amazing. Thank you for that. And say as an example, if I was to, if there was the option to purchase the property at the end of the of the time frame, would the rent that I paid over the period of the contract contribute towards the purchase price? That, depends yeah um that will need to be um kind of agreed up front and written yeah. into the contract uh, it can't just be sort of determined and decided halfway through um, but it needs to be decided up front in writing yeah. but it can happen if the landlord's open to that mm. um or the vendor's open to that yeah then they could write that into the agreement yeah into the agreement perfect and then say as an example if we stick go back to the rent to rent uh model say i am the operator and I have um, taken on a three-year contract with the owner. What would happen if the owner decided that he, that now wants to sell, and actually it's maybe eighteen months into the contract? Um, that is covered in the contract. I can't remember. Usually, what happens is um, the landlord will effectively um, have to sell to another landlord, and effectively the new landlord then takes over the property with effectively the guaranteed rent already in place yeah so it's not a, so it's not a bad situation to be honest it's um perfect quite so there's really nothing nothing for me as an operator to worry about with regards to exactly. that okay fantastic um tanya's just put something into the chat box uh, that's what i receive now letting my property with the council guaranteed rent yeah. What would be the benefit of doing it this way plus i'm not ready to sell my property in the next three years yeah. That's a good question. Um, so one of the benefits between sort of, for example, like a housing association or the council and sort of this method is the the operator. So that effectively in model one, the operator is going to kind of furnish the property, decorate it and things like that. So when they hand the property back after, say, three years or four years or five years, however long the agreement is, quite often you'll get the uh, all the furniture, all that kind of thing included. Kind of you can have that for free as well. So effectively your property is given back to you in a really yeah. high standard. Also, um, Housing, local housing associations are capped at how much they can offer for the rent because they have to go off the local allowances. So if, say, the market rents um, 500, the HA companies can usually only offer like 450, whereas the rent to rent operator can offer usually market rent or even higher because they can see the potential profit they can make from it. So they can allow a bit more um, rents each month. And also, um, House associations, although they work well for a lot of people, they can also work not so well. And often um, properties can become damaged because of the type of tenants that are in there. Whereas with rent to rent, um, basically the property has to be kept in good condition, otherwise they won't make any money. So they have to keep on top of keeping it really um, high end and high spec because otherwise they won't get any guests. Um, with regards to not being ready to sell in three years that's fine for a rent to rent you don't sell it's only the plo that you sell at the end so mm. there is the purchase purchase lease option rent to rent is just um the agreement ends in three years and then that's it you just get your property back perfect thank you for that i've got a couple of other questions um from vasca uh he's asked if it if it's a if it's a one man business basically uh, managing the bookings and the cleaning etc what happens if that person is ill or away on holiday yeah that's a good question um so we've um uh, we only work with effectively experienced managers um so we've kind of over the sort of year or so and um, we've learned who the good guys are and who the not so good managers are should we say um and that's where we only work with two two managers at the moment 
So again, we can always make, the, make those introductions and you can kind of um, have a chat with them yourselves. Yeah, they, they have systems in place. So although they're the one person, as in they're your point of contact, they're not the only person involved in it. They have a team of builders and electricians and cleaners and whoever. So yeah, like you say, if they're off ill, it would go to someone else in the team because it's not just that one person. Mm. It's just that we just have that one contact just for ease. Yeah. And it's a great it is a great question, because if you're a one man band doing that, managing properties and you're managing more than one, if you're a, it, 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 it then restricts it, it, even, you know, <laughs> let's discount the illness. Even mm. if you want to go on holiday, it restricts where you're able to go on holiday yeah. because of being that one man band. So it's a great question, Vasco. And honestly, if you are looking to manage that yourself I would definitely consider those aspects when you're looking at that because it we're here to increase time freedom not to limit it exactly, yeah that's yeah. it I think people when they they try and um obviously create more profit for themselves by um managing the whole thing for them themselves which is fine but I don't think people realize how much is actually involved in the day-to-day -day. and you know if a tenant is locked out at midnight that you're the one they're going to ring and you've got to sort that so if you have the operator or the sorry the kind of manager in place it goes to them instead mm, fantastic he's also asked a question with regards to model two he said is the model two rent received by the property owner typically less or more or roughly equal to the market rent for a standard property letting or an equivalent property yeah good question um so with model two obviously you own the property you're the landlord you're receiving the guaranteed rent Again, this is another benefit of this model compared to, for example, like the rent to the councils that you usually get full market rents and sometimes maybe even a little bit more because you, you're in the position to be able to negotiate. Whereas with the council, you're not really in much of a position. Mm -hmm. um, now, because these um, sort of rent to rent operators are effectively uh, making an uplift on their rents, they're profiting from the uplift. There is room again to negotiate on the rent you do receive as the landlord. Fantastic. I've got a question here that I just wanted to ask about with regards to service accommodation. Do I would I need a, a, a license to, to operate as a service accommodation provider? Um, not at the moment um, in Liverpool, which is kind of our main area or the northwest. You don't need a license um, to be an SA operator. You do need to comply with certain things like you would. Um, so uh, the manager would be able to help you with that. So there'd be certain things you have to comply with. Um, but no, you don't need a specific serving accommodation license. That That's something that might come in in the future, um, like HMOs did, but not right now, you don't. Okay, amazing, amazing. And then I, I have um, a couple of other things with regards to tenants and guests, you know, when we're operating rent to rent, whether it be rent to rent to families or to uh, as a service provider for for you know um other guests so do do they have any restrictions as to who could let that property whether it be a rent to rent for for a home or or as you mentioned emma like different people renting on nightly nightly let are there restrictions at all not really it just depends on the individual um kind of operator and what works best in that particular location so if you're close to a hospital, for example, like a five minute walk away, you'll probably get more NHS staff that are working part time and um, contracting or like you say, um, members of families of hospital, people that are in the hospital, family members want to rent the whole house out. It just depends on who's around. But um, yeah, it could be contractors. It's usually contractors in the week or professionals in the week working in the area and then the weekend would be like um tourists and um, that's how what we found works best um because these just go on these properties just go online onto like airbnb booking.com there's no kind of restriction on who can book it because anyone can just go online and book it mm. obviously some operators will have their own personal contacts so they might have um a contract for example with a local um developer and they'll go to the developer and say, I've got this house now. Do you want to put 10 of your workers in there? And then you can do it that way as well. So it just depends who. Yeah, there's no re real restrictions, really. It's just location. Amazing. Yeah, just depends who, yeah, what the location is and who it's more appealing to. So that would be more um, 
just just for the viewers that are watching that would be more like a corporate let agreement where yeah 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 so they're kind of the terms are interchangeable yeah so it's kind of um short-term let service accommodation corporate lets it's all the same sort of thing mm -hmm. i think with our personally with our the prop sort of properties we get through they're more the outskirts of city centers so they're better for corporate tenants so your contractors that sort of thing the ones in the city center your high-rise flats they tend to be for tourists but we've actually found that the ones outside do better because the city center ones are more saturated so um, obviously there's a lot more competition amazing amazing and then with regards to the local businesses uh that, that that may want to have those contracts are you able to facilitate those conversations those contracts uh with you know maybe put the investor or, or should i say the um the operator in, in touch with these with these companies do you have those relationships it, again that's mainly with the that's the, the manager's main job usually yeah, so she'll so she'll have the um contacts with the local local industry and things like that and then she effectively manages all the all the kind of the, the guest bookings and things so how it will usually work just as a as an example what tends to happen is say monday to friday uh, the manager may put in, for example, NHS staff, blue collar workers, contractors. And then on the weekend, for example, on Saturday, Sunday, she made a list on Airbnb. So you're kind of getting two tenant types. So you're kind of spreading your risk a little bit as well. But again, she does all of that for you. So it's very, very hands off. Amazing. So that's great. Again, that's another real benefit and value add that the uh, that the operator is not the operator. Let's use a different word that the service yeah, provider that the, the manager is is actually helping and assisting with. So they're they're facilitating as much occupancy yeah. really as possible because they're utilizing different demographics, different people during the week uh, to get you maximum volume there, which is brilliant. OK, perfect. Those answers that answers those questions, I think. Um, Tanya's asked, uh, really, do you consider flats, houses or both? Well, I think Emma's already mentioned that, but Emma? Yeah, so again, for us, for the sort of houses we get through, um, it just happens to be kind of two th two and three bed houses, um, more in the outskirts of city centres. So that that's what we get through. That doesn't mean to say flats don't work in the city centre. Um, it's just our, personally, our stock is mostly houses. But um, if you're saying it from the landlord side the model two side if you have a flat we'll definitely try even if it's outside the city center because you just don't know what people are looking for at the time and um, so we can always try and find someone to take it on for guaranteed rent uh, give you the guaranteed rent so um we'll try anything <laughs> fabulous uh, fabulous sorry toby were you going to yeah i was going to say it's probably worth mentioning um blocks of flats oh, yeah. um are really popular um for for rent to rent and the location is still important but it's possibly less so with blocks of flats because the um the uplift from the sort of operator's point of view is is fairly large and um, so if you anyone's got any blocks of flats they're they're really like popular. a full block yeah yeah amazing okay that's great to know as well so tanya i hope that answers your question um tanny has asked does the number of bathrooms affect the business um <laughs> Not really. I mean, if most houses, most of what we get is three bedrooms and one bathroom and they work fine. Um, maybe if you have over four bedrooms, you'd probably need one bathroom and at least one toilet. Um, but it's quite rare that we'd get something like that. Um, There's no set rules. Yeah, it's not like a HMO where you have to have, you know, en suites and so many mm. bedrooms per, per, per people. Um, so yeah it's not really we haven't found it to be a problem yeah that's that's brilliant and it makes again it just makes it a lot easier doesn't it then with, with what you're with what you've saying um okay perfect thank you for that Tony. i hope that answers that for you and then tom has a question he says he's asked what platform aside from airbnb do you use for marketing and driving traffic to your properties um, so again, booking.com is quite a big one, um, but again, a lot of it will be sort of uh, off-market marketing, if that makes sense, with the contractors and the local relationships and things like that. Mm. And I think that's really key, isn't it, to remember that, you know, what we're doing here is property, but again, it's business and business is always based in relationships. And the more relationships that you can leverage, 
uh, the wider that net you can cast, uh, it'll give you what you need for that business itself. So I hope that answers that, Tom. Um, just with regards then, just to recap for uh, our investors that are live here and those that watch on replay, again, model one, is the operator mm -hmm. so i'm operating as the provider i don't own the property and model two i own the property and somebody else is um operating or facilitating that as a rent to rent model with each model toby and emma can you just explain for those who may watch on replay who aren't here to ask any questions before we close this special what are the crucial things that each would be responsible for Question. okay uh, so model one the main things is the setup costs and the operational uh, responsibilities so things like you have to make sure you've got the utilities kind of in mind and again kind of make, making an effort to think about your staging and kind of the upfront costs and then with model two the responsibility and emphasis is if you have a mortgage check in with the mortgage requirements uh, i'd say that's pretty much it isn't it um no so i'd say Model one, it's more of a, your day to day as well. So you you would be the one in, involved in the bookings and well, you and your operator um, and manager. manager. So the the landlord doesn't really have anything to do with that. They're completely separate from that. Um. So yeah, it'd be your kind of your day to day bookings, your cleaning, your maintenance, all that sort of stuff. Um. And then yeah, model two, yeah, checking with your mortgage, but you would have certain responsibilities such as um structural issues so if there was damp in the property that would be your responsibility to fix um keeping up to date with eicr's gas safeties um so like you would with a normal letting to a tenant um part of the structure of the property again so windows doors major things basically like major electrical issues that sort of thing if that went wrong that would be your responsibility as the landlord um also any licenses that are needed for that particular area, not necessarily specific to service accommodation, but in Liverpool, for example, a lot of the postcodes, you need a, a Liverpool license, a selective mm -hmm. license. That would be the landlord's responsibility. Um, so again, general like home insurance, like to cover the building, that's the landlord because obviously the tenant can't take that out in your name. Um, so yeah, okay. that's it really. So I think if we look at this in a real, in a really simplistic way, if I am the owner, then whether I'm owning a, a property that I'm then renting out to another operator, as the owner, I am, I am responsible for structure, yeah. for building insurance, and the, anything that would be anything that would be a given as an owner of a property yeah yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. major yeah. things like water you know if there was a first pipe or something yes and yeah then, so plumbing and yeah, building exactly. and things like that anything structure and even maybe boilers and stuff like that oh sorry that, yeah that. definitely boilers yeah so i've got yeah, yeah. Boiler and heating 100 that's the landlord's responsibility yeah perfect and then as a as an operator really if i think of myself as a tenant mm -hmm. That those are my, my responsibilities. So making sure that the general maintenance of the property is taken care of, that um, I'm paying my rent to the owner, to the actual owner, this is the landlord, the real owner. So as a tenant, then I'm paying the landlord, the owner, uh, my rent, and I'm taking care of the daily maintenance of that property. So then if the walls need painting that's my responsibility if the curtains need hanging that's my mm -hmm. responsibility so I it's, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so when we really take it to a binary perspective the owner is is the person that is responsible for structure and boiler and roof and things like that and insurance and then the renter who is the operator in this scenario which is model one the, the tenant, the operator is responsible for daily running. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, would that be exactly. yeah. a really simple way to break that down? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd say exactly. so. Um, it's also worth mentioning that, so the um, operator obviously owes the landlord a guaranteed rent. So say that they run their essay and they only make £300 that month, not that month, they still owe the landlord the full, whatever the rent is, £600, for example. So Correct. You know, that's just another thing yeah. to bear in mind. So again, if we just put it to the binary of owner and tenant, 
it doesn't matter what I earn that month, you yeah. know, exactly. I still have to pay my rent. Yeah. yeah. I still have to pay my rent. Okay, perfect. So I really do thank you both for your time, effort, and energy on today's episode. I want to thank all of our um, guests who attended live and all of those who are watching on the replay. I really hope and trust that this episode has explained exactly what it means um, to be either the owner or the operator um, of, of this, uh, of this um, strategy, as an example. Um, Toby and Emma, I'm just going to ask you to stop sharing your screen, sorry, so that I can just finally share mine and just show the, our investors uh, what your... Uh, what your um, what's the word I'm looking for, please? <laughs> that coffee's worn off, everyone. The coffee's worn off. What your dash, not your dashboard, what your website looks like on our system. So this is this is Toby and Emma's website within sourcing investments uk. so as you can see here you've got white door properties uh, what they do and you've got all of their information here you've got toby and emma's uh, profile pictures and then what they uh, provide as well as a little bit about them and the strategies that they can help you in as well um, this was the property that we actually went through which was sold so when you go on to the sourcing investments website and you're looking at a rent to rent deal because the templates don't allow just yet for us to advertise it you will see there will be flags on the uh, right hand side that will tell you exactly what the property is so they've highlighted that it was a serviced accommodation property uh, and our agents will be writing in there that it's a rent to rent deal. So it could be rent to rent, uh, serviced accommodation or just rent to rent in itself. So please do look out for those things. You'll see live on here. I'm not going to go into any of the agents, but you'll see the difference here in the windows as anything here. This is uh, just a, a simple buy to let. And this here shows that it's uh, it's a hot rent to serviced accommodation. OK, so we have those examples there. So it's just so that you can see, as an example, what the difference looks like from our usual template of buy to lets, HMOs and whatever the deal may be. And the difference between that with a rent to rent model, whether it's rent to rent on a buy to let or a serviced accommodation, the agents are putting that into the title. So when you see that the purchase price is £3,000 or £10,000, please note that that's a rent to rent or a purchase lease option deal going on there. So that's just with that. So Toby and Emma, I really want to thank you so much for your time, effort and energy, as I've said already. Thank you so much for explaining, for highlighting exactly what you do and what our other agents are doing on the platform. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this strategy is literally flying off the shelves. Those are the only two rent to rent deals we've got in at the moment. Our agents are sourcing as many as they can possibly find. We sold five last week alone. So Emma and Toby, any final words for our viewers at all? Um, I don't think, I think so. so. Hopefully it all made sense. Um, <laughs> Obviously, if it didn't, just feel free to reach out to us. We can help explain things, maybe a phone call or whatever, because it is quite um, hard to get your head around. So, um, yeah, we're just here to help. Brilliant. And I have added uh, Toby and Emma's link into the chat box. For those of you watching on the replay, feel free to reach out to admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk. We will happily uh, signpost you in the right direction towards uh, White Door Properties with Toby and Emma so that you can get in touch with them. Any questions at all, feel free to ask. Uh, and with that, I'm going to sign off from this Valentine's special. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. You investors are love, lovely, love, love, loving the rent to rent. And so are we as, in, as uh, agents as well. So with that, wishing you an amazing day. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care and bye for now.